It's a good day to brew, baby. What is up, YouTube? It's your boy, Millsy. Back with Hometown Commander. Back for another episode of Millsy Brews, the show where I brew my version 1.0 deck list to the commander in front of us on my quest out brew the magic world. As always, the deck list is going to be down in the description for you below. As always, I'd really appreciate it if you can interact with the video. Like, comment, subscribe. Check out the links in the description. Check me out over on Twitter and on Patreon. I'd really appreciate it. But today, we're finishing out our week of content with Doran the Sage Tower, an Absin Tree Folk slash Toughness Matters deck. As we got here towards the end of the uh, Bloomboro command, uh, you know, uh, content cycle, I want to just take a look at decks that I got inspired from by certain cards in the deck. And this one is inspired by uh, Facoon Greenshell that came out in the set, a big Toughness Matter card that uh, gets you lands off the top when you have creatures that come in with their toughness bigger than their power. And I thought, what's a commander that can take advantage of that? And uh, I originally thought of uh, kind of like Arcades, but we had done Arcades in the channel before. I wanted to take a look at something different, and I ran across one of the other th Toughness Matters commander I could think of, which was Doran the Siege tower instead of playing defenders right that arcades cares about what doran cares a little bit more about just creatures whose toughnesses are bigger than their power and that's really easy to find because a lot of the tree folk exist that way a lot of them have more toughness than they do power anyway so it's kind of easy to make this a tree folk deck but also care about the others then there's a lot of board wipes that really take advantage of our play style having creatures with power three or less stay around and destroying the rest. And almost all of our creatures have power three or less, meaning we can really take advantage of these big one-sided board wipes that are going to hurt our opponents. So let's go through it. Let's talk through it all. Let's have some fun and get into some trees. Well, as far as our tree folk go, there's a lot of really fun options. We have Bosk Banneret that makes all of our trees, tree folk and shaman spells a little bit cheaper to cast. And Dominal Ancients over there is a four mana 210, probably being a 1010 when it comes to an attacker, which is well worth it. Fangorn there in the middle is seven mana, four, 10, that gives all of their tree folk vigilance. Remember, one more tree folk attack, we get twice that much green mana, and then we don't lose green mana as phases and steps. And Fangorn's a little bit of a exception when it comes to the rest of our tree folk. A lot of them are smaller in the power than, than Fangorn's four. But I think it's well worth it to work up towards Fangorn and get the big tree folk as well. Orchard Warden is a 4-6, and when it comes into play, and then near the tree folk comes into play, we gain life, we go to its toughness. Quick start, or quick beam, upstart, and it's kind of a fun one there in the middle. Whenever it or another tree folk comes in, up to two tower creatures, get plus two, plus two, and trample on a turn. And then Seed Guide Ash can actually just go and get up to three forest cards from our library and bring them in tapped. Remember, that's not f basic forest, that's just any forest. We can get dual lands, we can get tri lands. I like Sea Guide Ash. If we could see it, it feels really good. Six, we get to play the new six from uh, Mono Horizons 3. Being able to play things back out of our graveyard is great, so that things get removed, we can play them back. One of uh, my favorite tree folks that we get access to playing is Timber Protector. All of the tree folk get plus one, plus one. And then other tree folk and forest we control of Indestructible. So it's going to protect all the rest of our tree folks from any destruction based removal. And then Tree Folk Harbinger, you'll see this is very. Um, common when it comes to all these lore wind tribes you're going to have a tr creature that's going to come in and fetch a creature of that type or, and put it on top so it can get a tree folk or a forest and put it on top which is still actually pretty darn useful but getting into the um toughness matters portion it's not all tree folk we're playing there are some things that we're playing that aren't tree folk but still care about toughness matters Watley says that each creature assigns combat damage equal to its toughness. So we're getting some of these redundant effects to make sure that if someone removes Doran, we still have access to this. And then the minus three can just gain us life equal to the highest toughness among uh, creatures we control. Ancient Lumberknot, again, sign damage greater than its power. Each creature with toughness greater than its power assigns damage equal to its toughness, which again is great, making sure that we're dealing more damage. Ikra Shadiki is going to gain us life every time a creature deals combat damage to a player. It's going to gain us life equal to its toughness, so that's great, making sure basically that the toughness uh, matters even, even more. Rashad Gin Bashir, again, each creature we control assigns combat damage to its toughness rather than its power. And then when it attacks, if we have the initiative, we can double the toughness to each creature we control in a turn. And by just taking the initiative is a whole, you know, is it's a whole Boulder's Gate mechanic that will probably only matter for Rashad, but um, it allows us to basically get a big buff. Tree of Perdition is a ton of fun, exchanging our opponent's life total with Tree of Perdition's toughness 
potentially finding a way to just take an opponent down to a very manageable life total and knock them that turn. And then Tristani, remember their creature comes in, we gain life equal to that creature's toughness. So you could see a lot of these abilities just really care about a creature's toughness. Assault Formation lets us do the same thing, assign combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. Uh, this is, of course, a lot more better used in those Defender decks, so it... It says that a creature with Defender can attack as though it didn't have Defender. We don't have too, too many in the deck that have Defender, so we're not as worried about that. But the nice part is we can throw a ton of mana into its bottom ability to give all of our creatures plus 0, plus 1 until end of turn, effectively making them bigger because of that toughness over power rider. And then uh, Dormant Grove seems like a ton of fun here. At the beginning of combat on our turn, we can put a counter on a creature we control. And then if that creature has toughness 6 or greater, we turn it over into a 3-6 that gives other creatures vigilance. So I think there's a lot of fun here. There's a lot of intermixing here as we go. But let's get into our one-sided board wipes. Now, not all of our tree folk exist to this, but some of them can be really fun. Dusk just destroys all creatures with power 3 or greater. Again, a lot of ours... Um, or below that, so that we don't have to worry about that. Expel the interlopers, choose a number between 0 and 10, and destroy all creatures with power greater than that number. So if it's 4 from Fangorn, or 3 or 2 for the rest of our tree folk, again, this is going to hit more of our opponent's creatures than ours. Fell the Mighty, destroy all creatures with power greater than target creatures' power. Again, pick one of our you know, tree folk with 2 or 3 power and destroy everything else. Slaughter the Strong. Each player chooses any number of creatures they control with total power, four or less, and then sacrifices all other creatures they control. Again, a way to really take advantage of um, that. And then Battle for Bywater, destroy all creatures with power three or greater, and then make a food for each creature um, we control. So a way to kind of, again, get rid of all these creatures and get uh, some foods in the process. I know that that's kind of an airplane view through it, but at the end of the day, we're trying to take advantage of these creatures that are, have a higher toughness than their power and try to, you know, um, inequally have that on our side where our opponents may not. As far as it goes, uh, and like I say on the show, I say it before and I'll say it again, no decks ever complete. This is my version 1.0 shot at it. And I think as we go into testing, I think the one thing that I would want to see is do I have enough removal to take out our opponent's things when we need to? I've, I've put a good amount of removal in the deck, abs, and we're in perfect colors for things like Anguished Unmaking and Abrupt Decay and Assassin's Trophy. But we have things like Putrefy and Terra Sunder that can be great as well. We are playing Swords of Plowshares. We're playing Generous Gift and things like that. It just comes down to how wide open does your removal need to be or can you get away with things like Putrefy instead? And then Ren and Seven makes a ton of sense to me. It can make a tree folk every turn equal to the number of lands we control and can go digging for lands. I feel like it's the total package, but I just wasn't sure how much it would completely line up, how much the tree folk really mattered, or were you just playing pure toughness matters? Um, it feels really truncated, but at the end of the day, you know, Doran's here to do one thing, which is make our creatures hit harder because they got bigger butts. So let's get into it. Keeping a three lander with that tree folk harbor, we can go get one of our choice Faber or Elder, which could tap for mana, and then that ancient lumber knot for a little bit of redundancy for Doran. And then we have a couple walls that draw cards when they come in just to help us out. So turn one, we get Seed Guide Ash, a great thing to work our way up to. So we'll get that Canopy Vista in turn one, so we got nothing better to do. Uh, Tower Defense gives all of our creatures plus O plus 5 and reach until end of turn is a great one-sided buff for us. I think we'll get that Harbinger in. When it comes in, we search our library for a Tree Folk or um, Forest card and put it on top. Uh, I really like Timber Protector with how many Tree Folks we have in our hand, right? I think that kind of makes the most sense. Close and shuffle and put it back on top. Going to turn three, that exotic orchard. Again, Doran makes sense here. Faber or Elder, you know, isn't a bad choice just to get access to some more mana. Now we have two colors, so Faber or Elder can tap for two mana in the future. And um, we're just working our way towards really just trying to get more resources in. There's another land. If we get Doran down, it would allow Faber or Elder to tap for three mana, but I don't really see that three mana doing us right too too much good timber protectors four i think in all reality we need to just get some more lands in but i don't find okay, three and then favor elders five right so we can play that timber that seed guide ash going to get three forests and what put them right on the battlefield right put them right into play taps so we're going to go ahead and find our triome in dotha triome that is a forest 
And then I think it makes the most sense to find stuff that's already gonna come in tapped, right? So like Lush Portico will give us a surveil. And then I believe I'm playing the black green one as well. I am not. Okay, so we can go get something like Scatter Groves. Close and shuffle, all three of these come in tapped. That uh, Lush Portico gets us a surveil. We see Expel the Interlopers, don't mind that one being on top. Now we're in great shape as we come into turn five. We've got four, seven, eight, nine mana. We'll use three of it for Doran. So that way Fabor can tap for all three, right? So now we've just got seven mana. Um, I like Timber Protector and then Wall of Omens to draw me a card. And now we can get in this turn with a couple of these creatures that are, again, going to attack for their toughness rather than their power, and they get that little bit of buff and indestructible, so they're all going to hit pretty hard. Uh, the uh, Faber Elder is tapped, but you basically have this, which is a 1-4. This is a 5-5. Five, five. And then these three came in this turn. So a 5-5 five, five and a 1-4 that hits as a 4-4 four, four can go in attacking this turn. Uh, coming in the next turn, now, if we have a, um, if we have a world where, you know, people have a lot of big creatures, we could go for one of these board wipes. But if not, I kind of like the idea of getting some stuff down and then just going right into combat. So getting something like Ancient Lumber Knot down and then go right into combat. The reason is, is we have this trick in tower defense, meaning if people don't really block, we could take a big swing here. Plus, uh, plus zero, plus five, you know, makes this into a nine makes this into an 8, makes this into a 10, makes this into a 10, makes this into an, um, an 11, right? Makes this into a 9. You know, you could see how tower defense could really just change this game if nobody blocks. And I think that's where cards like this could be really, really good for us. Um, but then we do also have the removal and the board wipes to back it up. Just take a big attack here, get some damage in. If one of our... Um, If one of our um, creatures dies, then, you know, we can always replay it. I apologize. I'm sorry. Um, so, yeah, I think it, um, I think this board state's about where the deck's trying to get to, right? Bunch of stuff on board, bunch of stuff in hand to go. And, again, now we have these removal spells, these things that we can use in the future to keep it moving. But let's get into play test number two. Um, keeping a, let's see, a three lander with wild growth asceticism to protect our creatures, heroic intervention to protect our creatures, and old man willow, which, um, can, um, can potentially knock down some other creatures, uh, our opponent's creatures power, but really it's just a star star where star is the number of lands we control, which is still a great ability at the end of the day. So turn one, I kind of like getting down that and the wild growth this will allow really bountiful promenade to be a turn to doran if we determine that to be the best thing for us we have rock banneret which can reduce some things we have that asceticism I'm trying to think i almost think that it might be crows and verge here and then the banneret so that we can crack the verge next turn to get some more right because now we can potentially try to get up right towards our higher mana value things play the promenade and I think we just crack the verge this turn. Again, turn three, people aren't doing anything too, too crazy, right? I'm sure we've got, we're going to have some time here to take advantage of other people working on their board states to get some extra mana. We'll go get the Lush Portico and the Haunted Mire. And that will give us a surveil. Now we're already up to five mana total. That all by water seems great. And again, we used all our mana that turn, so nothing nothing too much there, but that's okay. Now on turn four, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and all of our um, tree folk costs one less. So I kind of think it's what? Doran? And then Old Man, Old Man Willow, right? One less. And now we're setting up for next turn where we can potentially take a little bit of attack here. Last March, the ends feels fun here. Eight mana, big green spell. It says we can draw cards equal to the highest toughness of creatures we control and put any number of creatures from our hand onto the battlefield. But uh, I kind of like just getting our Ikra Shadiki down because now when these attack this turn, if they hit, we're gaining life equal to their toughness. I mean, this is a 5-5, five, five, this is a 5-5 five, five because of its, you know, Doran's ability, and then this is a 3-3. You know, three, three. So we should have some attacks here on turn 5 to get in and gain some life. Go to next turn, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
So we're just one mana off of that. Um, one mana off of that uh, last part of the ends. I would go ahead and get this asceticism down to give our creatures hexproof. Leave the heroic intervention up in case we need it. Again, just take another, you know, take another set of attacks here. Probably gain some life, right? Because of the menace on here and just the fact that they're bigger bodies. You know, that old man Willow is a six six now. You know, five five three. You know, three three. And again, we could always regenerate something if need be. But again, we're attacking big, and if they hit, we're gaining a life for it. We'll go one more turn. Here is our eighth mana. So I think I would just do the Ents. Our greatest toughness is seven, right? Because of Shadiki. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right? Lots of lands. That's okay. We get one, two creatures from our hand. Uh, Orchard Warden says whenever another tree folk comes into play in our control, we gain life, which is toughest. And then Oris Fro Orin Frostman giving all of our creatures death touch and um, combat damage drawing cards. Uh, we didn't play our land for the turn, so we'll get our land down. And then again, we just take an attack. Now we're going to draw off the Frost Ring, which might force us to discard here, but I think that's A-OK, -okay, because now they have Death Touch, so, I mean, people may want to block no matter what, right? Because it's not like they have Trample, but they're, now they're not going to want to be taking this 6-7 damage. But it just goes to show you that now this is a pretty darn good board state. And even a Battle of Bywater next turn would only get rid of Shadiki and the Warden. It would leave us pretty much the rest of our board, which would still, or in the and the Willow, but still be pretty big if we wanted to do that. But we could, you know, buy water plus heroic intervention to really take advantage of just knocking, you know, knocking the board around. But Doran, I still think is a really interesting commander. I think there's a lot of room to play around with it. I've tried my best to make a deck that takes advantage of the toughness matters plus you know getting things like trample when we can we are playing multiple trample enablers for our entire board and things like that but i think it's a deck that you can truly make your own take advantage of what you want to take advantage of it take advantage of just the the big butts that are going to hit hard but let me know what do you think of doran down in the comment section below and i will catch you guys next time